Hello dear students, this is grade 12 mathematics lesson on unit 2, introduction to limits and continuity. So today focus on limits and continuity of a function. So uh, after uh, revising this lesson, you are expected to determine the limit of a given sequence. Second, you are expected to identify whether a given function is a continuous or not at a given point. And third, you are expected to determine the continuity of a function over an interval. So now let's proceed to uh, the lesson. Now let's see this one, the definition of a limit. A function f of x is defined on an interval surrounding x naught, not at x naught, surrounding x naught. If this function f of x gets closer and closer to real number, you can see this uh, in this graph, we have this function f of x. If this function f of x get closer and closer to L when x goes to x naught, in this case we say the function f of x when x goes to x naught uh, is equal to this L. And you have to be careful that the limit of a given function f of x exists uh, when the limit of the limit of f of x f of x when x approaches to x naught from the right part from the right side of x naught must be equal to the limit of the function f of x where x approaches to x naught from the left must exist and equal to a number l. In that case, in that case, the limit of this function f of x when x approaches to x naught exists and it will be l. So this is a definition of limit. Now, let's try to see example for this part. So, let's see this one. Let's see this one. Uh, this function is given. From this function, from this graph, you are expected to find the limit of the function f of x when x approaches to different values. Let's, let's try to answer this uh, turn by turn. Let's start from the first part, the first part, uh, from a. You are asked to find the limit of f of x when x approaches to 1 from the right side. 1 from the right side. To find this, look. Uh, 1 is here. The right side of 1 is this part. So, from the right side of 1, when you go to the, to the graph, you will find this number. This part. So, from the right side, this function is approaching to the functional value is approaching to 4. Therefore, the limit of f of x when x approaches to 1 from the right it is, it is 4. B, the limit of f of x when x approaches to negative 1 from the left. 1 from the left. When you approach 1 from the left side from this side, the functional value, look this one, the functional value goes to this part. Therefore, the limit of this function when f of x approaches to 1 from 
the left side approaches to 5. So this it is 5. Now, the limit of f of x when x approaches to 1 will be how much? Look this one. As you can see here, the limit of f x when x approaches to 1 from the right side is it is 4. The limit of this function when x approaches to 1 from the left side it is 5. Since these two are not equal, so the limit of the function at 1 does not exist. So, in order for limit to exist, the right side and the left side limit must be equal. So, now let's see D. The limit of f of x when x approaches to 2. We have to here, to find the limit of f x when x approaches to 2, we need to check both right side and left side limit. They must be equal for the limit in order to limit to exist. So the right side limit, when you approach from the right side, uh, it approaches to 2. And from the left side of 2, when you approach x from the left side of 2, the functional value also goes to 2, since both the left side and the right side limit are equal and equal to 2, the limit exists and its limit is equal to it is 2. Now let's see E. Uh, the limit of this function when x approaches to negative 2, look this one, negative 2 is here, negative 2 is here. To find the limit, you have to check both right side and left side limits. Uh, when you approach negative 2 from the right side, the limit will be this part, it is 3. From the right side, it is 3. When you approach negative 2 from the left side, its value approaches to 2. Since the left and the right side limit are not equal, the limit of this does not exist. It does not exist. Does not exist because the left side and the right side limit are not equal. Now let's check this one. The limit of f of x when x approaches to 3. 3 is here. When you approach 3 from the left side, its functional value is this, almost between 2 and 3, it's almost 2.5. When you approach 3 from the left side, the limit is almost 5. So left side and right side limit are not equal. Because of this, the limit of fx when x approaches to 3 doesn't exist. Does not exist because the right side and the left side limit are not equal. This also, the limit does not exist. Does not exist. Now, let's continue to the other part. So, let's see this one. The limit of 4 when x approaches to 2. This it is a constant function. By the way, uh, if, you, if you draw the graph of this function, it's a con y is equal to 4, it's a constant function. It's a constant function. 4, y is equal to 4, or f of x is equal to 4, uh, this one. So we are asked to find the limit when x approaches to 2. 2 is here. When you approach from the right and from the left of 2, the functional value approaches to 4. Therefore, the limit of for when x approaches to 2 is it is 4. Generally, you can generalize this. For any constant function, the limit of some constant function c when x approaches to any number a will be always this the constant number. Always the constant number. Now, let's see the second example. The limit of 2x minus 1 when x approaches to 1. Look. If you take right side limit when x approaches 1 from the right, uh, 1 point something, 1.00, 2 times that number is almost 2. 2 minus 1 is this? 1. If you take the left side limit, almost 0 0.99. If you multiply it by 2, it's near to 2. So 2 minus 1 is it is 1. So 
the limit of this expression is this two times one simply you can put for any polynomial function to find the limit simply you can put the number so the limit of this 2x minus 1 when x approaches to 1 you can just put 1 here 2 times 1 minus 1 the answer will be this 1 so generally the limit of any polynomial function p of x when x approaches to a this is equal to simply you can put a this p of p of a this is it now let's continue to the third example let's see this one you are asked to evaluate the limit of absolute value of x over x where x approaches to zero by the way absolute value of x is equal to x is equal to x for x less than zero this is a definition therefore i can write absolute value of x over x to be x over x absolute value of x x x over x for x greater than zero this will be this one when x is zero this ratio is this doesn't exist for x less than zero this part is minus six this part is minus six minus six over x will be this negative one so absolute value of x over x is this one for x greater than zero negative one for x equal to zero but it doesn't exist at zero so to find the limit of this i need to check the right side and the left side limit of this expression so from the right side of the limit of this expression will be the right side limit you take this one the limit of absolute value of x over x when x approaches to zero from the right is a little bit greater than a little bit greater than zero means this one this part so the limit of this constant number when x approaches zero is this it is one therefore the right side limit for this expression is one and the left side limit the left side limit this is one the limit of absolute value of x over x where x approaches to zero from the left side if you take left side this part a little bit less than zero at means so you take this function so it's constant function negative one the limit of negative one is this negative one so the left side limit is negative one so since these two are not equal since these two left side and right side limit are not equal the limit of absolute value of x over x when x approaches to zero doesn't exist so this is it. the right side limit and the left side limit the right side limit is one the left side limit is negative one since these two are not equal the limit doesn't exist now let's continue okay this this example you are asked to calculate the limit of x squared plus x minus 2 over x plus 2 where x approaches to negative 2 in this case uh, we need to simplify this expression when you factorize x squared plus x minus 2 you get this one x plus 2 times x minus 1 over x plus 2 when you simplify these two cancel out you get what the limit of x minus 1 when x approaches to negative 2 so since this one is a polynomial you put negative 2 here negative 2 minus 1 the final answer will be it is negative 3 the limit of the expression is this negative 3 now let's see this one you are asked to evaluate the limit of the square root of x minus 2 where x approaches to 2 so in this case you have to be careful you need to check both right side and left side limit uh, the right side limit you take a little bit uh, a number greater than 2 2 something 2 point something so square root of 2 point something 2 point zero zero uh, almost 2 point zero zero minus 2 almost 0 so square root of 0 it's 0 the right side limit is it is 0 the left side limit you take a little bit smaller than uh, 2 let's take it one near to 2 from the left 1.99 if you take 1.99 minus 2 this becomes the square root of negative number so it's, it's not a real number because of this the left side limit does not exist since the right side and left side limit are not equal uh, the limit of this expression does not exist okay now let's see uh, 
other example, you are asked to find the limit of the square root of x minus 1 over x minus 1 when x approaches to 1. In this case, when you face uh, an expression uh, which containing square root, uh, you need to rationalize the expression. You need to rationalize the numerator part or the denominator part. In this case, we have the square root expression is the numerator part, so let's rationalize that. So this equal to the limit of, to rationalize this, you multiply it by the square root of x plus 1. Multiply both numerator and denominator by the square root of x plus 1. So when you multiply this, you get this result. The product of the two it is x minus 1. The product of this is x minus 1 over x minus 1 times square root of x plus 1. So these two, these two cancels out. So when you put 1 here, the square root of 1 is 1. 1 plus 1, it is 2. So the limit will be this 1 over 2. The limit will be this 1 over 2. Okay. Now let's see continuity of a function. A function f is continuous at x naught if the following three conditions are satisfied. One, f of x must be defined. Two, the limit of f of x must exist at x naught. Three, the limit of f of x when x approaches x naught must be equal to f of x naught. If these three conditions are satisfied at x naught, then we say that function is continuous at x naught. In other words, I can write this in this form. In short, a function is said to be continuous at x naught if and only if the limit of f of x when x approaches to x naught from the right side must be equal to the limit of f of x when x approaches to x naught from the left must be equal to f of x naught. So if this satisfied in that case, that function is continuous at x naught. Okay, now a function if is continuous, is said to be continuous on an open interval a, b, if it is continuous at each point between A and B. Or, in other words, the limit of fx when x approaches C must be f of C. For all C between A and B, this means it must be continuous at each point between A and B. Okay, now let's proceed to uh, the other part. Uh, a function f is continuous on a closed interval a, B, provided that 1, F must be continuous on open interval A, B. It must be continuous on open interval. 2, F is continuous from the right side of A. It must be continuous from the right side of A. That means the limit of F of X when X approaches to A from the right must be equal to f of a. It must be continuous from the right side of a. And it must be continuous from the left side of b. If it is f is continuous from the left side of b, that means the limit of f of x when x approaches to b from the left must be equal to f of b. You have to be careful that a function is continuous on this interval a, b means, it doesn't mean that a function is continuous at a. It doesn't mean this. It means it continues from the right side. And it doesn't mean that the function is continuous at b. It doesn't mean this. It is continuous from the left side of b. So it's a definition of continuity of a function on closed interval. Okay, let's check whether uh, this function is continuous or not at different points. Let's start from this one. Uh, the first question is here. Is f of x continuous at x equal to 1? We are asked to uh, check whether this function, this graph, we have this one, this part. 
this function is given, you are asked to check whether it is continuous or not at 1. To check this, the limit must exist at 1 and f of 1 must be equal. The limit, to check this, the limit of this f of x, when x approaches to 1, must be equal to f of 1. So, the limit of this function when x approaches to 1 from the right from the left, it approaches to almost 4. But f of 1 is open, this part, it, does, it doesn't define. Because of this, this function f of x is not continuous at 1. It's not continuous at 1. So f of x is uh, not continuous. Now, let's see. The second one is f of x continuous at x is equal to 3 from the left side. 3 from the left side. 3 from the left side is this part. 3 from the left side. So a function is said to be continuous uh, from 3 from the left side if and only if the limit of that function when x approaches to 3 from the left side must be equal to f of f of 3. So the limit 3 from the left is this, this part. So it is 5. f of 3, functional value 3 at 3, it's defined to be this one, it is 5. So this part also it is 5. Since the limit of the limit of the function when it's approached to 3 from the left side is it is 5. And f of 3 is also 5, so the function is continuous from the left side of uh, 3. It's, it's continuous from the left side of 3. Uh, so this yes. Now, uh, here you are asked to determine the interval of continuity of f of x. So look, it's continuity. This function, it, it, it continues like this. So this function is continuous from negative infinity up to negative 1. It's also continuous from the left side uh, of negative 1. Is it continuous? No, it's not continuous from left side of negative 1 because the limit of this function uh, from the left side of negative 1 is it is almost 2. f of neg negative 1 is, it is 1. Because of this, it does, it's not continuous from the left side of negative 1. Uh, therefore, it's continuous on, on print interval negative infinity up to negative 1. Okay, uh, now the other part is from negative 1 up to 1. It's continuous from negative 1 up to 1. Let's check it whether it's continuous on the border part from negative 1 from the right side, 1 from the left side. Okay, uh, 1 from the negative 1 from the right side is limit as it is uh, almost 4 and f of negative 1, if you take f of negative 1, functional value of negative 1 is this 1. Since they are not equal, it is not continuous from the right side of negative 1. It's, it's open interval. So negative 1 up to 1. If you take 1 le, uh, from the left side, its limit is it is 4. f of 1 is not defined because of that it's not continuous from uh, the left side of 1 because of that. Uh, the continuity interval for this part is this, from negative 1 up to 1. Okay, from 1 up to 3, from 1 up to 3, uh, at 1 right side of 1, limit is it is almost 4, and f of 1 is not defined because of that, it's not continuous from the right side of 1, so it's open interval. And at 3, the limit from left side of 3, that means the limit from the left side of 3 is it is almost 5 and f of 3 is also it is 5. It is uh, defined here because of this it is continuous from the left side of uh, 3. So it's continuous on this interval. And from the right side of 3 up to infinity, it's continuous from 3 to infinity. Let's check at 3 whether it's continuous or not uh, from the right of 3. From the right of 3, its limit is almost uh, between 3 and 4. And f of 3 is this 5. They are not equal. Because of this, it's not continuous from the left of 3. So the continuity interval of 
this function is this one. Now let's proceed to the other part. Okay, here let f of x is given to be this absolute value of x over x. Is f of x continuous at x equals to 3? Is it continuous at x equal to 0? Let's check this together. Look, uh, this f of x is equal to absolute value of x over x. It is, uh, it is continuous at x equal to 3. Because the limit of absolute value of x over x when x approaches to 3 is it is 1. You can take a number near to 3 over number near to 3, when you take the ratio, it's 1. And f of 3, when you put 3 here, absolute value of 3 over 3 is 1. They are equal. Therefore, it is continuous at x equal to 3. Okay, but f of x is equal to absolute value of x over x. This is not continuous at x equals to 0 because simply f of 0 is not defined. Because it has to fulfill one of the three requirements, f0 must be defined. But here it's not defined because of this, uh, fx equal to absolute value of x over x is not uh, continuous at x is equal to 0. Okay, now let's see this example. Suppose f of x is given to be this, ax minus 3 for x greater than 2, and 2x plus 5 for x less than or equal to 2. This function is assumed to be continuous. So we are asked to find the variable a. So uh, to do this, this function is continuous means that it is continuous on its entire domain. It's continuous on its entire domain. So in particular, it is continuous at 2. So, since this function is continuous at 2, the right side limit of f of x must be equal to the left side limit of x when x approaches to 2, and this must be equal to f of 2. So, from this, the right side limit, you take the right side limit when you approach 2 from the right side, the functional value, this one, x minus. 3. So the limit of uh, from the right side is x minus 3 when x approaches 2 from the right. Uh, this must be equal to from the left side, you take this one. It is the limit to x plus 5 when x approaches 2, 2 from the left. And f of 2 means f of 2 functional value. It is for x equal to 2, the functional expression is 2x plus 5. So you put 2 there. So it's 9. So from this equation, from this equation, we can find the value of a. So the limit of this expression when uh, a approaches to 2 is just put to here. It is 2 times a minus 3. This value is 9. So when you solve this, when you solve this, it is a is equal to 6. Now let's see uh, the two important limits. Look this one. The first one the limit of sine x over x is 1, where x is in radian. And this part, the limit of 1 plus 1 over x, uh, when x goes to infinity is e, or in this form, you can write limit of 1 plus 1 over x, the power of x when x approaches to negative infinity is also e. Now, let's try to apply these two limit theorems. Okay. Look, this one, we are asked to find the limit of sine 2x over x cubed minus x, where x approaches to 0. To find this limit, uh, I need to factorize this one. Factorize this one. We have this sine 2x here, sine 2x over x cubed minus x. Take x as a common here, x into x squared minus 1. So, uh, from this, the limit of sine 2x over x when x approaches to 0 times 
this over this times 1 over this, the limit of 1 over x squared minus 1 when x approaches to 0. The limit of sine 2x over x can be evaluated simply by multiplying both numerator and denominator by 2. If you multiply this by 2 and by 2, you get the same result. Sine 2x over 2x means sine x sine y over y form, where y goes to 0. So this limit will be this 1. Uh, so 2 times 1, it is 2. And the limit of that part, when you put 0 here, 0 minus 1, is this negative 1. 1 over negative 1 is negative 1. Negative 1 times 2, it will be negative 2. So the limit of this part it is the limit of sine to x over x times 1 over x squared minus 1. The limit of this part it is 2. And the limit of this part it is when x approaches to 0, it is minus 1. So minus 1 times 2, it is minus 2. Now, let's see one more example. Look this one. The limit of x over x plus 3, the power of 8 minus 5x, where x approaches to infinity. To evaluate this, first, you need to divide x this part by x. So when you divide by x, you get this one. x over x, it is 1 x over x it is 1 plus 3 over x, the power of 8 minus 5x. And then take rest the reciprocal of this one and multiply the exponent by negative. So when you do that, the limit of x approach, limit of this expression it is when you take the reciprocal, it becomes 1 plus 3 over x when x approaches to infinity. And when you multiply this, the exponent by negative, you get 5x minus 8. After this, we have to convert because we are searching a solution for this form. 1 plus 1 over x, the power of x, the limit of this. When x approaches to infinity, this is equal to e. So we are converting this to this form. To convert that, let's assume 3 over x to be 1 over y. From this, you can get x, x it is 3y. And you can see that as x goes to infinity, y must also go to infinity. So you have this. Then let's substitute the limit of 1 plus 3 over x when x approaches to infinity the power of this 1 plus 3 over x, the power of 5, x minus 8. When x approaches to infinity, this is equal to the limit 1 plus, we assume this 3 over x to be, 3 over x to be 1 over y. So 1 over y. The power of 5x minus 8, we assumed x to be here, 3y. So when you put 3y here, 5 times 3y is this 15y, so here it is 15y minus 8, where y goes to infinity. As x goes to infinity, y will also go to infinity. So I can write this in this form. 1 plus 1 over y, the power of 15, times 1 plus 1 over y, the power of negative 8. So when you evaluate the limit of this expression, the limit of this part is this e because it has similar form of this one. 1 plus 1 over x, the power of x when x approaches to uh, infinity, it is e. So the limit of this part is e and e the power of 15. And the limit of this part when y goes to infinity is simply 1 over infinity it is 0, 1 the power of negative, this part it is 1. Therefore, the limit of uh, this expression will be this, e to the power of 15 times 1, is it is e to the power of 15. Okay, to summarize what we have seen today, the first point is this, 
the limit of f of x when x approaches to x naught exists if and only if right side and left side limit are equal and equal to a unique number. f of x is continuous, we say f x is continuous at x equals to x naught if and only if the limit of f of x when x approaches to x naught and the, from the right side and the limit of f x when x approaches to x naught from the left side must be equal to f of x naught. And the other concept that we have seen today is a function f is said to be continuous on a closed interval a, b, provided that this function is f is continuous on open interval a, b, and it must be continuous from the right side of a and continuous from the left side of b. So this is uh, the basic concept that we have seen today. So this is all about today's lesson. So try these questions. Uh, so until next lecture, goodbye.